Welcome to the American Contractor Show, the show that's all about American contractors living the American dream. I'm your host, John Dye. Each episode, we'll introduce you to contractors just like you who have beaten the odds and leveled up their game to become the dominant force in their markets. Together, we'll explore the tools and tactics that unlock the secrets to their success. Join me as we begin the journey that leads to the realization of your American dream. Well, let's see. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's like sitting there like, no, don't, don't do, do it. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the American Contractor Show. I am your host, John Dye, and it's a pleasure to be here once again with you guys. Hopefully bringing you guys uh, some knowledge today and some understanding of more things that are American contractors and things that hopefully can help you guys grow your businesses, become better, and provide you with more opportunities that you never knew existed. And that's the goal of this show is to open our understanding to what is American contracting and what the opportunities are that exist and how things work in this world and uh, all the newest innovations and tools and everything else that we got going on. I got a couple really awesome guests with us today. We have Matt Grassmeyer from Hail Trace and Steve Patrick from Level to Playing Field, two of the most knowledgeable, not knowledgeable minds in our industry, uh, specifically because I wanted to spend today's episode introducing you guys to the world of insurance restoration. Um, I'm not, I don't know, you know, where everyone's background is. And there's some people that have been doing this for years. In fact, a large part of our audience, because of Art of the Supplement and Balance Claims and some of the stuff that I'm involved in, is already pretty well versed when it comes to insurance restoration. But the reason I'm doing this today is because there's a lot of stuff going on in our world. We have a lot of things happening with COVID, uh, with possibly a recession, uh, an economic downturn. We're right about to go into what is historically known as hurricane season. And with that being said, there's a lot of great opportunity here for contractors that are trying to think outside the box on how they want to structure their business for the future, recession-proof their business, and become better at contracting. And I'm sure you may have heard that there is opportunity in the insurance restoration world. And so I brought in two of the best minds in this world that I'm a part of, that I get to hang out with, and know very well that understand this part of it. And that's Mr. Steve Patrick with Level the Playing Field. He's one of the best minds when it comes to understanding the insurance process and how to shield your profits and make sure that you are uh, dealing with this process the right way. And I also brought Matt Grassmeyer. And the reason I got Hale Trace and Matt Grassmeyer is because nobody knows forensic uh, hail and uh, weather like these guys do. They understand this opportunity, they understand the market, and they know how to point you in the right direction to get a great start on that. And so I'm excited to have them. We're going to have them with us in just a minute. They're going to be joining us. But before I do that, I also want to mention that you know, everyone knows the pitfalls and the frustrations that come when hiring a public adjuster. In fact, most of the contractors that I know cringe at that word public adjuster. Most PAs have little to no experience actually writing an estimate or negotiating a claim, and all they really do is delay the claim and make empty promises. Well, that's not C3 Group. These are the guys that you guys want to know. C3 Group has been around for over nine years, and they really know their stuff. They focus on doing things right and have the best investigative team that's out there in the industry. Their director is even an Xactimate certified trainer. And if you've ever watched any of C3 Group's uh, commercial roof training seminars, it's pretty obvious, obvious that this team is really dialed in when it comes to commercial training and understanding the claims process. So do me a favor and quit hiring the guys that just see you as a claims provider and are really good at talking about claims and marketing. And instead, call the guys that really know what they're doing. Give C3 Group a shot with your next large commercial claim that you need help with. Go to C3 Adjusters to learn more and uh, check them out. They're an amazing group, and they've done some amazing work that we've been able to uh, – I've been able to win as firsthand. Matt and his team are phenomenal at what they do. And also, I want to mention Atlas, claim, or, uh, Atlas Roofing today. Uh, they are killing the game when it comes to how manufacturers should partner with contractors because of their Asphalt Life community. Um, Asphalt Life exists to bring you the most valuable information on, on how you can run a better, leaner business while maximizing your your uh, your live, roof, play lifestyle. So to learn more about Atlas Roofing and Atlas Life, go to atlasroofing.com slash asphaltlife, and you can learn all about what they're doing. And they are phenomenal for uh, material and, for, and the way that they really work with contractors is great. So make sure to check them out. So without further ado, though, I'm going to bring on my buddy, 
uh, Matt Grassmeyer and uh, Steve Patrick, these guys, I'm telling you, they know their stuff inside and out, and they have been doing this for a long time. And uh, just a great group of people. So thank you guys for being with me today. Hey, guys. <laughs> It's a pleasure to have you both here. And I'm, I'm excited about this one because, you know, we're moving into uh, this new uh, new reality. I hate to use that word new normal. I know it's been said so much, but there's, you know, so much uncertainty in the future. And, you know, I look at companies that are doing a lot of insurance work and I see their numbers. I mean, I talked to a guy yesterday who's been in business for three and a half months. Now he started his business after doing sales for a large company. He's got some uh, resources and he's building a business, but he's built the, the numbers outrageous how many roofs they've built in the last three and a half months. And, you know, they got nine trucks on the road now, like they're growing their business mostly related to insurance. And that's here locally in Indianapolis, which is crazy. But there's such a great opportunity. And I wanted to talk about that today with contractors that might be in like uh, the GC world or the trades world and are maybe looking at what insurance restoration is. And, and maybe they know that there's an opportunity, but really don't know how to get into it or what things uh, this really what, what, what really this opportunity even looks like. And so I want to introduce them to it. And you guys are two of the most uh, gifted people in our industry when it comes to this and have some of the best resources. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Absolutely. So Matt, I want to start with you. Um, I wanted you to see, see if you can share with us some of the data behind the statistics and stuff of what this opportunity really looks like. You guys run Hail Trace, which is a, a forensic weather team in Oklahoma that you guys know this stuff inside and out. Um, tell us some little bit about what this opportunity looks like and what contractors should be looking for when it comes to uh, the weather side of this. Well, sure. So when we talk about opportunity, the first thing I, I would say is just looking at the opportunity that you have personally, if you're a GC guy that's doing, doing things for people in their homes, you've got a, a list of leads already. Um, that you could that you could start with. If you have you have done a thousand projects on a thousand different homes, you've got a list of a thousand people that you could reach out to um, in regards to uh, the weather related claim space. Um, and so that that's where I would start is looking at those those types of things. And obviously, like you need weather data to do that. Um, and so companies like Keltrace can can allow you to um, really track that from a um, from a leads or a contact standpoint and the scenario that I would like that I would throw out is if you've done if you did 100 GC jobs in 2019 I would say let's figure out if any of those were impacted by weather events either last year or this year and see if there's anything that you can do and obviously like you want to learn as much as you can and so it's it's um, it starts with that opportunity as far as like what you've already done but then it's it's reaching out to, to people who so are essentially it, that kind of stuff. You're saying to, to mine your own customers that you've already worked with in the past. Um, but how do you even know if they've been affected or if they even have uh, an insurance related claim? So I think I think the, the the process would start with getting into some of the weather data. Um, Hail Trace provides like really great weather data. We have six meteorologists that map and track every weather, every uh, severe weather event across the, the United States, Australia and Canada. Um, and, and the way that can um, really uh, yield opportunities on the insurance side of things is when an, an address is impacted by severe weather, whether that's hail or wind or, or tornado or, or even hurricane, um, we can take specific address and kind of point point contractors in the right direction. Like we can, we can provide like what we call a hail map where we say the north side of Denver was impacted by golf ball size. So we can map out a territory um, that allows you to go see where hail is falling in a specific city or an area. Now, the way that that goes to mining your own contacts is you could actually track those inside of a software based program like hail trace. And let's say you, did 100 GC jobs last year, and then 50 of them were impacted by severe weather this year, you you have the ability to to track that with a software like HailTrace and pull out those 50 that were impacted by hail this year. So for me, it really starts with the, with the stuff that you've already done. That's a, that's a huge list that you already have. Um, 
and then and then the other side is just understanding like the the type or the the numbers that are that are associated with that. In 2019, I was doing a little bit of research. In 2019, anywhere between just just according to our data, I just used Teltrace data. Um, anywhere between uh, six and nine million homes were impacted by severe weather last year, and that's um, that's anything one inch hail or larger. So all houses last year impacted by at least one inch hail. Uh, between six and nine million homes. Uh, wow. So that's a that's a lot of homes in 2019. Um, the other oh, thing yeah. that we know, the other thing that we know about th that specific uh, data is, in any given storm, only you know, 50, 60 percent of roofs are replaced. There's obviously there's a lot of variables that go into why those roofs aren't replaced, but what that tells us on the backside of that is there's plenty of opportunity in this space. Now you look at a city like Dallas, for instance, where guys in Dallas are always talking about it's, it's saturated. There's too many roofers down here. There's not anything to do. I would argue that you're just, you might not be looking in the right place. There's plenty of roofs that need to be replaced in Dallas right now at this very instant. Um, and it's just knowing how to find those and how to, how to, how to extract those out and how to get to those people and, and get those, get those, uh, those roofs bought. <laughs> Yeah, and so you guys have the data of where these houses are located, what customers have been affected by it, and uh, you guys can help contractors market and build lists essentially based on that data, which is you know the first step in all this. And six to nine million homes being affected by storms, that's a massive number. And that you're right, that's a huge opportunity that contractors, if you're just focused on the retail side of the world and you're a general contractor, or you're, you're a home builder or a, a tradesperson, and you're thinking, how am, how am I going to take my business to the next level? This obviously is a massive opportunity. Um, I want to hop over to, to, to Steve real quick and ask him about this a little bit too, because Steve, you know, tell us a little bit about your background, because I, I think it's really fascinating to hear where you came from and how you are helping uh, contractors today. Well, I started out as a contractor 22 years ago, um, and uh, so I didn't I didn't start out doing storm work, but it didn't take long before uh, I saw that there was a tremendous opportunity to do storm work uh, back in the day. And I did that for about uh, five or six years, and uh, things had gotten so slow here in Dallas that uh, I decided uh, there was three hurricanes that hit. I'd gotten my adjuster's license just so that when I met with adjusters, uh, there would be some type of affinity, you know, instant rapport with those guys because I was an adjuster too. And then there was three yeah, storms yeah. that hit um, Florida, three hurricanes hit Florida at, in the same month uh, back 16 years ago. And so I went and worked those storms as a claims adjuster. Then I worked several hurricanes after that, a bunch of hell storms. And uh, I started uh, training. And so I teach, train, and coach contractors across the nation on how to deal with uh, claims adjusters and how to maximize legitimate profits in this space. And I spoke with like about, uh, I coached about 10,000 contractors last year. And wow. Uh, wow. so, you know, that's crazy. <laughs> and so there's a real need, you know, there was a, uh, a government official was quoted about six years ago saying, never let a good crisis go to waste. Well, <laughs> You're in a great crisis. And so, you know, there's two different ways, you know, you can look at things, you can look at things that glass is half full, the glass is half empty. You know, uh, you can either say, well, you know what, this is a horrible time to be in business. Or you could say, man, how do I leverage this so that I can take advantage of the opportunity, not take advantage of people, take advantage of the opportunity and leverage that to be able to just really crush it this year. I mean, I know guys that are just there that are doing more business than ever in this time. And then there are people who are sitting around and they're playing video games all day long in their house and uh, they're barely, barely able to pay their bills. So the interesting thing is, is we as contractors get to choose. What do you want? And so. So you put your thinking cap on and, and you become creative and you let those creative juices flow. And you find original ways to be able to uh, to maximize things in this time. So there you go. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's and that's the reality of it. And there's so much that goes into it. But I want to go specifically into the insurance side of it. And you know, Stephen, you and I both are are former P, uh, former IAs, former insurance adjusters. And you know, looking at things from their perspective, you know, I think a lot of contractors they see this as more of a money grab than an opportunity. A lot of times, what's the reality? of that type of mentality is it really just a money grab or is it really an opportunity to help like do these roofs really need to be replaced you know if, if you're in the roofing business the retail roofing business typically you're called out when a roof is either nearing the end of its life cycle or if it's leaking particularly if it's leaking bad and that's the time that you go out and you find out wow this roof is worn out it needs a new roof and you sell a new roof really the insurance um, insurance contracting space is not really any different than that, except that it's a $250 billion a year business. And so, of course, there are opportunists out there that want to, uh, you know, say every roof needs to be replaced. That's absurd. Uh, if a roof can be repaired, we should repair it. But if it has legitimate damage, such that it warrants replacement, then it should be replaced. And it's really, um, there are very objective uh, standards that determine that. It's not just a subjective opinion. Well, in my opinion, this, my opinion, that. Uh, everyone has an opinion, and we all know that saying. So, um, <clears throat> and contractors that are considering coming into the insurance restoration aspect of this business you run it just like you do your retail business. In fact, you sell exactly the same way. You don't sell, hey, how would you like a free roof? That's what someone says who doesn't know how to sell. If, you, if, if anyone out there is using the term or the phrase free roof, they don't know how to sell. Because why are you doing that? You would sell this roof just like you would any other. Either the roof needs repaired, needs to be repaired, or it needs to be replaced, or it doesn't. And so every time you go out and you take a look at a property, you determine, you know, based on the amount of damage, whether or not the roof needs to be repaired or replaced. It's no different. Um, a lot of people in the insurance restoration space, they think it's different and it's not. And so, yep. You know, that makes, and that makes sense because, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's really not a fine line. It's either you understand how hail affects roofs or you don't. And so I want to I want to flip over to Matt a little bit about this. Um, I'm not sure, you know, Matt, you guys probably I don't know if you, in your meetings you guys talk about how hail affects roofs or not or how the the actual, you know, but talk to me a little bit about what hail does in weather in general to an exterior of a house and why it's it's important that that data be collected. Well, I think I'd love before we get into that, I'd love to piggyback off of what Steve was talking about and specifically speak to again to the opportunity like there's a there's a couple ways to get into the restoration game. One is a big storm comes through and you, Dallas is a great example. A big, big, massive storm comes through and you go out and you might, you know, you're, you're needing a job and you jump in and it's really easy to see that there's damage on roofs. Um, the other, the other way, which would be a way that uh, like a GC guy would get is a perfect way to come in. Cause you're not, you're not like blinded by the, the big storm, uh, the, the, the entry or the pull of the big storm, you can look at it and look at it like a, like a long play game. Whereas, you know, if you are utilizing the, the correct software and the correct processes, you can really work 10 to 12 months out of the year and it, it becomes less storm season based. We're a weather based company, but we try to coach contractors on let's stretch this thing out. You can work 10, 12 months out of the year if you're doing it right. And, you know, to piggyback off of what Steve said, not every roof needs to be replaced. And you should note that. I, I think every roof is valuable. It just depends on when. And if you're on a roof and there's no damage on a roof, like obviously like let's not waste our time. Let's not, let's not try to get that roof paid for. Let's just track that as it doesn't need anything right now. We can come to that later. We're just waiting for the right opportunity to come by before we can go back and say, all right, now that roof has become more valuable. Um, as far as like speaking to the weather side of things like hail, hail obviously forms – uh, when cold fronts come through and uh, they're basically just little ice balls. And it's, I mean, you look at, 
you know, like the size of, of hail matters, the wind behind hail matters, how it hits a, a roof matters, what kind of shingle is on the roof matters too. But like the, the density obviously uh, matters as well. So uh, hail impacts roofs in a way that like it, it what's the, what's the word? It, it uh, messes with the structural integrity of shingles. Like it, it, it causes shingles to not, to not work. Uh, like they are designed to work anymore because it disrupts what they are designed to do. Uh, you add you add all the other things to it, like a like a storm event that impacts a roof. Like that may not be what ini like initially totals a roof, but like if that sits like heat, more rain, it goes through seasons. Um, shingles are you know the structural integrity of a shingle is compromised and then it goes through heat and it, it expands and it like, there's a lot of different things that play into that. But, um, uh, hail is definitely one of those things that can, that can cause some severe damage, um, to, to the roof system itself. So, 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 okay. So we know this, the roof is damaged. Then why do insurance companies have to pay for it? Steve, can you explain kind of like why it's important that people understand where they, they fall when it comes to the insurance side of this? Well, what insurance is, is a, is a transfer of risk. So uh, in this house that I'm in, there's a risk that the house could catch on fire and perhaps even burn to the ground or at least, you know, destroy the kitchen or whatever the case may be. I could have a water leak from the water heater and it flood the house and there'd be a bunch of water damage in there. And uh, storms could hit the house and cause damage primarily to the exterior of the house. Maybe maybe it causes so much damage that water leaks into the house and you have stains on your ceiling or something along those lines. And so <clears throat> as a homeowner or a commercial property owner, there's a risk of those sorts of things happening with insurance. It's almost like a quarterback that passes the football to a receiver. The court, the, the football is the risk. So there's a transfer of risk from the homeowner or commercial property owner to the insurance company. The insurance company says, we'll, we'll accept this risk in exchange for insurance premiums paid on time. Of course, that's the payments that we make to the insurance company and that we actually abide by the terms and conditions of the contract, which is known as a, an insurance policy. A lot of people don't realize that, that an insurance policy is a contract. And uh, so um, lots of people have insurance claims. Now, we have contractors that do fire restoration work. We have contractors who do uh, water restoration work. The primary group that I'm training at, in this season is those guys that are doing storm work. So whether it be a hell storm or a wind storm blows into town and it causes damage to the exterior primarily of a building, whether it be a residential dwelling or a commercial property. And uh, so, we as contractors go out and take a look at the damage and, and based on the extent of damage and repairability issues, we determine whether or not the property can be repaired and, you know, without looking like a patchwork quilt, you know, so that it maintains a reasonably uniform appearance and, um, and it seals it up so that you're in this, you're essentially in the same position as you were before the storm, the, knowing the same financial position, but the same, you know, uh, weather tight seal on the property and it doesn't look like crap pardon my French <laughs> because when the storm blows in you have all this damage and your house looks bad you know and uh, if you were to put your house right, on the right. back after a storm uh, there'd be a significant diminished in value of the property so you want to bring it back up to the standards where it looks nice again and you know and it keeps the weather out of the house weather is supposed to be outside the house that's why we have air conditioning. We create weather inside the house that's different than weather outside the house. So anyway, yep. So, so Steve, let me let me ask you: What are some of the things that contractors typically mess up when they get into this world of um, insurance restoration versus you know what they what they're used to on the general you know the GC side of things? One of the things is is that they transition from that to this. Uh, I don't think you should do that. I think that it's much wiser to open up a, separ a separate division so you have a retail division and a storm division. The reason why I say that is because, um, you know, what if there's no storm in your town? Are you going to go chasing mm -hmm. storms? 
Some contractors do. And hey, a big storm occurs in a market. If it weren't for the contractors coming from out of town to be able to take up the slack, it would take years to be able to get all the work done. So there is right. a place for that. Um, those types of guys, the, the, the storm chasers, um, have a bad reputation, but there's professionals in that space just as much as there are liars, cheats, and thieves uh, in that space. You know, the typical sort of thing that most people think of. And so don't stop doing your retail. Continue doing your retail because that brings in the cash flow and so that uh, you're able to maintain your business. And then if, like I was in Philadelphia in a town, um, Beth Salem, Philadelphia last year doing a training for a company that has about 10 salesmen. And um, right before I got there, they had baseball size hail. Wow. So if this contractor was only doing uh, retail work, they would be turning away work or they're getting involved in uh, a process that they know very little about because dealing with insurance adjusters is an entirely, entirely different skill set. And uh, they can be exceedingly difficult to deal with claims adjusters. Yep. And if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you could waste a lot of time very quickly. And who has time to waste? Um, right, right. If you're a business owner, or even if you're a salesman working, you know, in a in a contracting company. So you would do well to do those two things: continue to do your retail business, so you have the cash flow coming in, and then get yourself trained up quickly, so that you have the chops to actually know what you're doing. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. And I, I'm, you know, between Hail Trace, what you do, the types of trainings that you do. I mean, this stuff wasn't around. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, as much as it is today. I think the opportunity is like never before for a contractor to transition and to learn about the insurance restoration side of things a lot quicker and a lot better than they've ever been able to in the past. Um, you know, we, you know, there's so many good, good things out there. Steve, when's your next training, by the way? I know I'm you guys doing are doing virtual like, now. Like I said, I'm doing private trainings like I did the, the company outside of Philly uh, last week. So I'm doing those. Um, I don't think that the powers that be are really wanting us to do large group seminars and conferences at this time. So unfortunately, because of anti-social distancing or whatever you want to call it and, uh, and everything, it's going to be difficult doing a large group, but doing a group of 10 to 20, you could use a medium sized room and everybody stays six foot apart. And that, and that has worked pretty well. Um, so I'm doing, I'm doing private trainings for companies and right now, and that's not a problem. I don't know. I know we have some stuff scheduled uh, for around the end of the year and the beginning of next year. We have things scheduled. Um, I don't know. You know, who knows? Who knows what COVID is going to do? Is it going right. to go down? Is it going to level off? Is it going to spike? God only knows. And so we're kind of uh, hamstrung in that. But... Uh, I have a book that I wrote that I'm giving away to contractors for free. I'm doing webinars um, on a fairly regular basis. And so we're trying to be able to bring the information to the contractors in as easily digestible format as possible so these guys can be trained up so that they know what they're doing. I know that this company that was outside of Philly, man, these guys, it's uh, the name of the company is USA Roofmasters. Um, Tom Kovac, man, talk about a company that's got their act together. Uh, these guys really are very well trained. And, and now they have baseball size hell hit in their town. <clears throat> man, if, if you're a contractor and if you have a storm hit in your town, that's the best of all worlds because oh, you are established in the town. You're not a storm chaser. Yep. And so if you know how to use uh, digital marketing, and what Matt was talking about is being able to use those uh, storm maps, the hail maps, the wind maps, and things of that nature. To, and you could enter the data of all your existing clientele and find out which ones of your prior, prior clients are actually inside the area where the hail where did the most damage. Uh, all you have to do is contact them and say, hey. In fact, um, this company in Beth Salem, Pennsylvania, they replaced... They replaced the roofs 
on a 25 unit apartment complex about 10 months ago. And then baseball size hail hit those properties. And so and it's gonna be like a $2.5 million project all over again coming up in the next couple months. And <laughs> the complex already likes them and trusts them, so they're not gonna use anyone else. And so they're in town. Man, that's the best of all worlds. If 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 you know what you're doing and you're well trained and well staffed and hit the ground running when a storm occurs in the town that you're at or, or close nearby, man, you can really crush it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think uh, I agree with you, Steve. How do people get your book? Oh, uh, so grab a pen or a pencil, and um, or type it on your computer screen or whatever you care to do. Uh, all they have to do is text the word ebook, no hyphen, just E B O O K, to the following phone number 214 496 5182. Again, text the word ebook, no hyphen, just five letters E B O O K, to 214 496 5182. Now I'm going to ask for your name and your email address and your company name and the name of your firstborn child. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so we never, we don't spam people. I hate spam as much as anybody. And, uh, but when we come out with, with revised versions of the book or some type of new training or something like that, we might send out an email and let you know uh, an update on some of the things that we're doing that help contractors out. That's yes, awesome. I can, con I I can confirm Steve. that this book is free. I've gotten the book. Um, it's it's yeah, it's a it's a free resource and it is a wealth of knowledge. So get it. You don't read it like a novel, although I have contractors. That are I mean, they're, they're so assertive and man, they're just like really type A personalities and and they read the thing from from cover to cover. It's really designed for you to go through the uh, the uh, the table of contents. And you see the subjects that you feel are applicable to you and your business at this point, and you read those chapters. And as time goes by, if another um, set of circumstances arises, and you can then use the book as a reference, or you can go back and reread those chapters, whatever the case may be. And so that's that's how I designed it to be utilized. That's cool. That's awesome. Guys, get that book. Matt, how do people get a hold of you guys? Because I know you guys have a lot of training as well that you guys do and different stuff. Yeah, we do. So we do weekly trainings. Uh, we actually go live on Facebook every day at noon with our forecasts and, and uh, recaps of previous days. And Great forecast. I love uh, that yeah, forecast. Thank you. Thank you. The, our, our team of meteorologists put together the best tail forecast in the biz um, every day at noon. And then we also do live trainings at nine o'clock on Tuesday mornings and central time. And then two o'clock central time on Thursday afternoons, where I kind of just talk through, uh, how to use Hailtrace, different things you can get out of it, different, different features that'll help you be successful. Um, and so our website is www.hailtrace.com. You can also find us on Facebook. Um, so yeah, there's a couple, there's a couple ways to get all of us. We're out there. Um, go into the various chat groups and ask about weather and typically they'll, you know, they'll start talking about Hilltrace. So we're out there. And Derek and doesn't know this yet, but he's got the, he's going to have the second coolest truck in the industry. So good for him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, that's I think a, he that's a hint. That. <laughs> I'm sure he will, but that's just a hint to all of our viewers and listeners about what's coming down the pipe here. But I'll just say that Hilltrace is going to have the second coolest truck in the industry. So <laughs> good okay. for him. Okay. That's, I'll, we'll take that as a challenge, I guess. <laughs> you know what I like about oh, man. You know what I like about these guys is the fact that they have a staff of meteorologists uh, on staff. I mean, yep. are they the least expensive guys out there? Obviously not. But it's the same thing with you contractors out there. Are you the cheapest contractor in town? God forbid that you that you be that. <laughs> be the most expensive contractor, Agreed. and you're such a good salesman that you have more business than you can than you can handle. Be that. Be the most expensive guy because you offer the best value. And see, that's what Helltrace does is because they have these meteorologists on staff, their maps are more accurate. So why are you getting a map? Because you want an in inaccurate map or because you want an accurate map? So I highly recommend these guys and uh, they're not the cheapest in town, 
but they're the most accurate maps because they actually hire meteorologists instead of guys who just work at a you know a hell mapping business. So anyway, that's right. my own personal opinion for what it's worth. Well, well, I appreciate that. And I think yeah, I think speaking towards value is always the best way to go. And and yes, yeah, like Steve said, we're not we're not the, the least expensive, but we can prove the value and we can get you on roofs that you're not going to get on without us. So that's kind of where we come into the into the game. Now, I love what both you guys are doing. I think both of you guys provide so much value to our industry. And uh, I've worked with each of you, you know, on different occasions. And I know the the quality and what you guys do and the training and everything else. Top-notch stuff, officially endorsed. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being on here today. Both of you guys are have done amazing, hopefully are helping contractors uh, through this through this conversation today. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, if, if a uh, if a contractor is thinking they're not doing insurance restoration contracting now, and they think that they would like to get into it, how would you like to um, have a conversation with up to ten thousand different contractors that are in this space? So yeah. our Facebook group, it's 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 um, it's kind of built like a forum, so a person can ask questions or come on and just read other people's questions and the answers that these contractors that are a member of the forum uh, answer. Um, you can do any of those things and you can do it at, you know, at your leisure and you can kind of see what you're getting yourself into by reading um, some of the questions and the answers that are in that. So <clears throat> text the word forum, F-O-R-U-M to that exact same phone number, 214-496-5182, the word forum, F-O-R-U-M, and you can join our our Facebook group for That's free. It's a as great well. resource. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone takes advantage of that those opportunities because there's so much great knowledge that you guys are sharing, and it's awesome to see it. So thank you. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Good to see you guys. You all have a great day, man. Yep. So, folks, that was Matt Grassmeyer with Hail Trace and Steve Patrick from Level the Playing Field. These guys are killing it. They are doing amazing stuff to help educate contractors just like you and to make you guys the best that you can be, whether it be retail, insurance, whatever else. These guys know their stuff, and uh, they can help you with, with amazing tools and resources that just weren't here 10 years ago. I know my family transitioned from a general contracting company to a uh, storm restoration company more, more or less. And that was a, that was a massive transition from commercial, from commercial GC to, uh, to then doing storm work. Um, and you know, we didn't have all the cool tools like we have today. Uh, the tools have become so much more uh, efficient, made everything better and made us so much better at being able to help our clients better. And that's the ultimate goal is uh, putting these resources together and bringing them to, to the table so that you can make your business better, become more profitable, become more recession proof, not have as many uh, dips and, you know, uncertainty. It's a great opportunity, especially no matter what's going on in the economy. I'm literally telling you guys, like I'm watching as this industry does what it does here from the balance claims headquarters where, where we're located. And I see the, the, the contractors that we work with nationwide and they're just killing it. Even with all this craziness that's going on in the world, there's still a great opportunity there. So make sure to check it out. Reach out to these guys. I'm sure they would love to answer your questions. Uh, we'd love to help you out here at American Contractors Show at Balance Claims. Whatever we can do for you, we'd love to do that as well. So hopefully you guys will be with us on Thursday. We have another episode coming up of the American Contractors Show. There's a ton of stuff back in the works that's coming out that's really cool stuff. I think you guys may have seen that little catch-all cameo we had before here at the beginning of the episode today. That's because we visited catch-all last week and uh, we got some stuff coming up for that we got a an amazing episode about truck wraps coming up that you guys don't want to miss and a bunch of other stuff so make sure to like and subscribe our page and uh reach out if there's anything we can do for you if there's any topics that you guys want to see i'd love to hear about it thank you so much for watching have a great day everyone thanks so much for watching today's show make sure to like and subscribe our pages so that you can stay up to date with every episode and by the way this show is all about you the american contractor be sure to comment, let us know what you want to hear about and what subjects you want us to touch on. We'll be sure to include them in a future episode. Thanks again and I hope you have a great day.